Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Welcome to St. Sarkis Church. I'm so happy to see all of you here today. You guys are so strong. Nobody was scared from the snow. I thought it was going to be few people here today, but you proved me wrong. The snow changed some plans this morning. For example, our beloved prelate was supposed to be in New Britain, but due to the changes of the plans, we are so happy to have him with us. I don't mind the snow. I love the snow. Well, I don't like shoveling the snow, but the snow doesn't bother me. But there's something that I do not like, something that I see around these times of the year. I don't like seeing the Christmas trees that once were decorated, that once were in the center of the living room, now being thrown at the curbside. As if we are trying to say that we did whatever we had to do, it's all over, let us move on. Well, it's going to happen. Everybody's going to throw eventually their Christmas tree. We're not going to keep them forever. But sometimes we do things very fast. Let me give you another example to better explain what I'm, what I'm saying. On January 2nd, I went to, to the pharmacy, to CVS. And the day before that, there was a whole aisle for holiday decorations. On January 2nd, that was replaced with Valentine decorations. I thought that was very soon. That was that transition happened very fast. And if you do not take what I say, look at the Bible and you will see that in the Bible, in the nativity scene, there is a message there which tells us to focus and to think about the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, to think about the great mystery. Now, when we think about the nativity, the scene of the nativity, uh, I'm sure that most of us have certain pictures that come to our minds almost immediately. We think about the shepherds, we think about the magi or the wise people. Sometimes when we say Christmas, we think about the old Sunday school Christmas pageants that we are so used to. Sometimes people try to add things, remove things to make Christmas to be more interesting. There was this movie from almost 10 years ago. The name of that movie is Love Actually. In that movie, the little girl comes home and she tells, she tells her mom that she has a role in the nativity pageant. And she says that she's the lobster of the nativity. And the mother is surprised and she says, I didn't know that there was a lobster in the nativity scene. And the little girl says, well, I'm the second lobster. Now, we try to add things, change things, to a point that we almost forget what is the essence of the nativity. When we read the accounts of the nativity, there is one thing that, for me at least, is very important. When Mary gives birth and she puts the baby in the manger, and the shepherds come, and they tell whatever they have witnessed, and they leave. Luke tells us that Mary treasured all of this in her heart, and she pondered on them. This line for me is very important, because it's an invitation for us to think about Christmas, to treasure it in our hearts and to ponder on everything. Now, that being said, let's talk a little bit more about the characters of the nativity. Today, I would like to talk about two group of people. I would like to talk about the shepherds and I would like to talk about the Magi or the wise men. The shepherds, for some reason, they were considered almost like second-class citizens. People did not want to do anything with shepherds. 
Shepherds were the outcasts of the society. And it's very interesting because when we read the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, we read the author saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Comparing or giving the analogy of the shepherd and saying that the Lord God is my good shepherd. And you would wonder how that has changed throughout the centuries to a point that when Jesus was born, shepherds were considered second-class citizens. And on the night of the nativity, we see that the angel appears to them. And when we read the account that is found in the Gospel of Luke, the angel comes and tells them about everything and what, about what happens. And the angel tells them, don't be afraid. You will go and you will find the baby in a manger. The don't be afraid, sometimes we would think that it is about the shepherds being afraid of the angel. I don't think so. The shepherds were not afraid of the angel. The shepherds were excited to see the angels. But the shepherds were afraid to know that there was a Messiah who was born, and they were supposed to go and see that Messiah. I'm sure they were thinking that this Messiah must be in a castle, must be someone that, to whom we cannot approach. But the angel told them, no, you will find the baby in a manger. This Messiah is being born in a very poor condition. He's just like you. Go and embrace him. The angel invites those who were considered the bad people, the dirty people, the outcasts, to go and be part of the nativity. When we continue reading, we go to the Gospel of Matthew, and we see the opposite happening. The wise men, the Magi, who obviously were rich, because you can see what kind of gifts they brought to Jesus. They were very wise. They knew exactly when Jesus was going to be born. They were very respected. They were very sophisticated. Yet, they also were invited to be part of the scene of nativity. When we come to look at the nativity from those two perspectives, we come to realize that in that little place where Jesus was born, there was room for everyone. There was room for the poor and dirty and the outcast on one hand, and there was room for the rich, the wise, and the sophisticated. The scene of nativity is an open scene. It invites us to immerse ourselves in there. You know exactly who you are. Some of you might be thinking, the church is not for me. I'm a bad person. I'm a sinner. I'm an outcast. I don't belong to the church. Others might be thinking, well, this is not for me. I'm too good for this. I'm too sophisticated for this. But we come to see and realize that the scriptures is telling us something different. There is room for everyone in that scene. That nativity scene is inviting us to immerse ourselves, to be with God. A few days ago, I was with a friend of mine, a non-Armenian friend. And naturally, we were talking about the fact that we as Armenians celebrate Christmas and Nativity on January 6th. And for him, that was an odd thing. And I had to give the entire explanation why we do that. And finally, he was like, the Nativity is cool. I like the Nativity. But you know what is really cool? 
I was like expecting a silly thing from him, but he said, the incarnation is the coolest. And I, I paused and I said, you're right. He said, any woman can give birth, but only God can take upon him the human flesh to become one of us. This is what we are celebrating. This is the season. I threw my Christmas tree away, as most of you did. Christmas season is over. But the spirit of Christmas will never be over. Because God constantly is telling us that He loves us. And He has become one of us so that He can show us the way to be divine. Let this Christmas be different for you and your hearts and in the love of your families. May God bless you all now and always and forever. Amen.